Facebook audience and hello to my Periscope audience. Thank you so much for joining me again on this Sunday afternoon, uh, April 15th, 2018. As you know, I'll come on every week to release the word of the Lord, uh, whatever word the Lord gives me to release to the body of Christ. And as you hear me say all the time, if the Holy Ghost ain't saying nothing, I'm not saying nothing. Because it's about, what, and you need the prophetic word in your life. You are missing out. There's no way you can get upon people unawares. That's why so many people don't understand the things that are happening around them. That's why sometimes we make the wrong decisions. And as Christians, we don't have to make the wrong decisions because we got the Holy Ghost. Let me say that again. As Christians, we don't have to make the wrong decisions because we got the Holy Ghost. But if we don't learn how to tap into that and learn how to uh, listen to where he's leading and learn how to do what he says do, then that's how we get in trouble, okay? All right, so, as I said, um, hey, how are you? So, as I said, uh, I uh, asked the Lord every time before I come out in terms of what word does he want me to release to the body, and then that's the word I release to you. So, this week, the word of the Lord to the body is, seek my face. Again, seek my face. What's our scripture reference for that? Well, let's look at 2 Chronicles 7, 14. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. I'm going to read that out of a couple different versions. So 2 Chronicles 7, 14. King James Version says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. You can't, you can't hear me? All right, hold on. Let me be sure my volume's all the way up. I think my volume's all the way up. You should be able to hear me okay on Periscope. Let me know if you can't hear me. You should be able to hear me. Uh, my volume should be all the way up. So, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their, heal their land. No sound. Whew. Okay, wait, alright. Somebody on Periscope is telling me we got no sound, so let me check. Because this should be streaming live to my Twitter. So if this is streaming live to my Twitter, then the sound should be coming through, so hold on. Yes, there we are, and as it should be streaming live to my Twitter. Yeah, it looks like I'm coming so through. Streaming live to my Twitter, then the sound should be coming through. So hold on. Yep, I'm coming through right there live on Twitter. And as it should be streaming live to my Twitter. Yep, I'm coming through. I'm coming through. Streaming live to my Twitter, then the sound should be coming through. So can you know? Okay, great. Good, good, good. All right, so again, let me read that scripture again. Second Chronicles 7.14 If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And the word of the Lord this week is, seek my face. Now, why is that important and what does God mean by that? Well, first of all, let's look up what and seek says in the Hebrew, that Hebrew word there is bakash, bakash, and it means aim, beg, begging, concern, consulted, demand, desire, eager, hold, inquired, investigated, look, looked, looking, plead, pursuit, request, require, required, requires, search, search will be made, search, searching, seek, seeking, seeks, set about, sought, and tried. Wow. Seek my face. Excuse me. What does God mean by that? I'll tell you what God means. There are far too many of us, and I dealt with this on my Thursday night thing. I'll tell you about that in a minute. There are far too many of us that seek God's hand. You want his blessing. What God wants you to do is seek his face because he wants a relationship. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. God wants a relationship. Okay? 
So I want you to imagine if your kids don't talk to you till they want something. Let's say the kids are home all day and they don't say good morning. They don't say anything to you until they get hungry. Then they're like, Mama, why don't you fix us some food? Daddy, I'm hungry. And then after you feed them, they don't say thank you. They just go back and play and they don't talk to you. How would that make you feel? How would that make you feel if your kids come in your house <laughs> and eat your food <laughs> and don't say anything to you besides that? Well, that's the way many of God's children treat him. Many times that's the way we treat the Lord. We're not seeking his face. We're not trying to have a relationship with him. We're just trying to get things from him. And if that's what you're doing, you're seeking his hand. Okay? You're seeking his hand. You're trying to get his hand a blessing. You're trying to get God to open his hand. But that's not what he said. He said, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Seek my face. God wants you to have a relationship with him, an intimate, personal relationship with him, okay? And the only way you get to know God is the same way you get to know anybody else. You have to spend time with him. You have to spend time in God's word, and you have to spend time in God's presence. You have to spend time with God's spirit. You have to spend time in God's house. That's the only way you are ever going to get to know the Lord because that's the exact same process you, you follow with anybody else. If you think about it, think about your best friend. Think about how close you are now versus what it was like when you first met them. When you first met them, y'all probably hit it off right away, but you're much, much closer now. Why? Because you spent a lot of time together, a lot of time talking, a lot of time hanging out, a lot of time you know sharing things, sharing information about life, going through things together. That's why you're close, okay? Well, it is no different with God. Unfortunately, we think it is. So we think we can run in God's presence and just ask, seek his hand and just ask for his blessing. But he says what he wants is for us to seek his face. Now, how is that relevant to the other prophetic words and how is that relevant to what's going on now? I'll tell you how that's relevant. Oh, yeah, I had that buried behind my shirt. I'll tell you why that's relevant. That's relevant because as you move forward into the blessings that God has for you in this season, as you move forward to walk in his glory, as we've been learning uh, from our pastor, Apostle John Eckhart, and as you move forward into where God wants you to go, you are going to need detailed instructions. You can't just stumble your way into the perfect will of God. Did you know that? See, there's general things that the Bible says that all Christians are supposed to do, like come to worship to the house of God, pay your tithes, like pray and make your supplications to the Lord, uh, things like that, okay? Those are general things that all Christians are supposed to do. But when you get into the perfect will of God, Romans 12 and 2, that requires precision obedience. That requires for you to do what the Lord says, when he says it, the way he says it, for you to get the results that you want. And you're going to need detailed instructions for where you're going. God has been making mighty moves in the body this year. And there's also been still a lot of death and a lot of tragedy and a lot of people leaving here. So a lot of people aren't going to make it out of 2018 just like they didn't make it out of 2016 and 2017. But for those of us that are still here and those of us that are seeking God's face, we have to know his word. We have to know what it feels like when his spirit is leading us. We have to know his voice, and we have to know how to obey all of that. I'll give you an example. Uh, just this morning when I was in church, I always check and ask the Holy Ghost, do you want me to minister? Do you want me to prophesy to someone? Do you have something you want me to do? Because I'm open, because if you want me to release someone to someone, I will. Okay, And the Lord did give me some prophetic words for some people. That's what I'm saying, because I knew to check with the Holy Ghost before I just jump up and do something, or before I just go off you know, in the flesh on my own, or before I just run out of church. I stopped, and I checked with the Holy Ghost, and I said, what do you want me to do? And I felt him very gently lead my heart to who he wanted me to talk to. See what I mean? So as always, I'm, I, I say stuff like that because I always want you to know that I'm practicing what I'm preaching, that I'm doing what I'm telling you to do. I'm not just throwing stuff out there. I'm actually doing it, okay? 
And you are going to need precision obedience for where you're trying to go. Okay? Because you have to graduate from that global obedience that all Christians are supposed to do to get in the perfect will of God to do specifically what the Lord wants you to do. What does that look like practically? What does that mean to your life? That means, for example, if you want to move into a new living space, you're going to have to let the Lord lead you to let you know when you're supposed to move and where exactly you're supposed to go and how much you're supposed to pay. If you want to start a new business, you're going to have to ask the Lord to let you know when should I start that business? Because the Lord may say, start the business in September. This is April. That means from April to September, you're supposed to be preparing, preparing to launch. And then when the Holy Ghost tells you to launch in September, then launch in September. That means if you want to get married, you have to ask the Lord, is the person I'm dating the right person for me? Because if the person you're dating is not the right one, the Holy Ghost will let you know. And no matter how much it might hurt you, if the Holy Ghost tells you that the one you're dating is not the right one, then you need to break up with him and leave him alone. If you don't break up with him and leave him, leave him alone, you're going to get in a world of trouble and get married to the wrong person. That's something that take you 20 minutes to get in, might take you 20 years to get out, if you get out. Okay? The Lord might be calling you to ministry. Lord have mercy. This one is so important. I can't tell you the number of times where I've seen people that were called to the ministry, but they ended up kind of missing it a little bit. Because old school in church, people would think the only way you could serve God is preaching in the choir or on the usher board. Not the usher board, the usher board. Okay? So if you didn't preach... And if you weren't in the choir and you weren't on the usher board, people felt like they weren't really serving God. Oh my goodness, that's not true. Okay, God calls, well first of all, in terms of ministering in his house, there's five-fold apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, but there's also bishops, there's deacons, there's helps ministries, there's, you know, uh, security, which is a form of ushers, buildings and grounds, uh, maintenance, there's so much, there's so much, and that's just in God's house. Sometimes the call is somewhere in the community, like Joseph's call was governmental. Joseph was called to run the finances for a nation. A Nehemiah's call was a rebuilding call for a nation. Okay, Ezra, Ezra was a, was a scribe to write down the history of what was happening. Okay, Daniel's call was administrative. King David's call was prophetic, it was musical, and it was royal. He was a king. Okay, And so you have to seek God's face for detailed instruction. And sometimes you might be holding, because the picture in your head is kind of askew. Like maybe you think God is calling you to something he's not really calling you to, because I can't tell you the Lord have mercy. I'm thinking of two people right now, I wish I could call their name. I can't tell you the number of people I've seen that thought that God had called them to preach, but there's no anointing to preach. So maybe you have a speaking gift, but maybe preacher isn't it. Maybe God called you to something else. Maybe you're supposed to be an evangelist. Maybe you're supposed to be a speaker. Maybe not a preacher. Not. So anyway, hey, hello, Facebook. I'm sorry about that break. So what I was saying was that you've got to seek God's face. You've got to seek him specifically for what he's specifically calling you to do. And then there's another layer. There's another level. One of the layers and one of the levels is... You have to ask God for instruction for that season, meaning there's very particular things God wants you to do every season of the year if you didn't know that. If you didn't know that, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, every three months, okay, four quarters obviously in a year, every three months there's certain things the Lord wants you to accomplish. And then you need to get those things done in the quarter the Lord wants you to get them done. So when you move to the next quarter, you're ready for the next thing. You see that? There are some times when you've missed your window because you didn't move when the Lord told you to move. And you didn't release what the Lord told you to release when he told you to release it. I'll give you a personal example, okay? I had two books ready several years ago. And I was going to re release this one particular book. And the Lord said to me, don't release that one, release this other one. So I listened to the Lord and I released the book he told me to release instead of the one I thought. I can't imagine what the last two years of my life would have been like if I hadn't done what the Lord said do. 
because it changed the course of my life. And then the Lord told me when to release the other book that I had in mind. You see what I mean? I needed detailed instructions from the Holy Ghost, but then I needed precision obedience. I need to do what the Lord said do when he said do it, because this was back in 2014 or 15, but I remember it was around December. So I said, going into next year, I want to drop this book. And the Lord said, no, don't drop that one. Drop this one. Oh, yeah, that was December of 2014. And then when 2015 came, my life changed. Because I was obedient to precisely what the Holy Ghost was saying, because I have a relationship with God, not just global stuff that all Christians are supposed to do, but a specific day-by-day -day relationship where I'm before him every day, I'm learning, uh, uh, always learning to hear his voice, to discern what he's saying to me in his word, that kind of thing. Do you understand? So that's what it means when the Lord says you've got to seek his face. You can't just seek his hand and walk in God's house and just say, give me a blessing and you don't have any relationship with God, and you can't just be out there doing what you want to do because there are seasons, times and seasons in your life that you have to stay in sync with the Lord, okay? I'll give you another very practical example for women. Let's say you want children and you want a family. Well, you have a certain number of seasons for that to happen in your life, and sometimes I've discovered women get offended at that, but it's still true. You have a season of your life that it will be easier for you to conceive and bear children than at other times in your life. And so if you want to have children and you want to start a family, then it's very important for you to see God as a little girl. And when you see God as a little girl, you can ask the Lord, what season of my life do you want me to do certain things? So if you feel a call from God as a very young girl, it's very important for you to go to the Lord as a child and say, I feel like you're calling me to do this, but when do you want me to do it? Mm. Very, very important because God may have you start your family and spend those years uh, bearing your children and raising your children and give you the family relationship that you wanted. And then maybe in the next stage, he'll have you do that thing or he might have you do some things all along. I don't know. You have to ask him. But that's really, 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 really important. How many times have we either done it ourselves or you know people that had a chance to finish school? High school, two-year, community college, university, master's degree, and they messed it up. Either you've done that or you know somebody that did it. And when you do that, what do you say later? You say, I should have finished school when I had a chance. Think about it. Think about in high school, if you didn't graduate high school when you were supposed to and you had to go back and finish. Praise God that you finished. Don't get me wrong. And that's quite an accomplishment and you should feel proud of yourself. But I guarantee you that you said to yourself, I should have finished when I had the chance. I guarantee if you have to go back to school to finish something you started, you will wish you had finished when you had the chance. Okay, because those things need to happen in certain seasons in your life. You see what I'm saying? That's what requires precision obedience. That's why you have to seek his face. And I've discovered that a lot of Christians don't know that. A lot of Christians, like, like uh, my pastor was saying this morning, a lot of Christians think it's just about going to church on Sunday and checking off your religious box and throwing a few things in the offering plate and being in praise and worship for 15 minutes and going home and going to the old country buffet. No, that's religion. That's not a relationship. Because you hear me say it all the time, and I'm going to say it again. God is a person, not a set of rules. Hey, God bless you. Hey, God bless you. God is a person, not a set of rules. God is a person, not a set of rules. That's why you have a personality, because you are made in his image. Why do you think you have a soul? You have a personality. You have a certain sense of humor. You have certain entertainment that you like. You have uh, certain foods that you like. You have certain environments you like to be in. Some people like their house really, really hot. Some people like their house really, really cool. Some people like being by the water. Some people don't like the water at all. Some people like being on dry land. Some people like to live in climates that are warm all the time, sunny all the time. Some people love the winter. 
Okay? And all of that is all good. That's all little parts of God because God created all the climates. God created all the geography. God created all the elements and all the weather. And he puts little parts of himself in us. And that's why we're all unique beings. Because we are made in his image. And when he knits us together in our mother's womb, he pours into us the very specific things he wants us to have. That's why you look the way you look. When your father released his seed inside of your mom, he released millions of sperm. God took his finger and put his finger on the sperm that he wanted to be your body. And he let that sperm seed, that, that sperm seed penetrate your mother's egg. And that's why you look the way you do. Because there's a certain way God wanted you to look. And if a different seed from your dad had penetrated the egg, you'd look differently. Okay? But you look the way you look because God, when your father released his seed inside of your mom, God took his finger and guided the seed to fertilize your mother's egg that he wanted to turn into your body. Okay? I'll pray for you uh, at the end of the broadcast. Remind me again. Uh, Mary, yes. Remind me again when we get through. I'll be sure to pray for that. So that's why you look the way you look. That's why you were born when you were born. And that's why you have the personality that you do. You are on purpose. You are made in the image and likeness of God. You're supposed to be exactly fearfully and wonderfully made. You're supposed to be exactly who you are. The exact age you are. The exact ethnicity that you are. The exact personality that you have. That is why you are that way. Okay? Because you are custom designed by God to be that way. So, <clears throat> that being the case, you have a soul, you have a personality because you get it from your creator. He has a soul, he has a personality because he's a person. The reason we have eyes is because he has eyes. The reason that we have hands is because he has hands. The reason that we have a heart is because he has a heart. The reason that we have a mouth is because he has a mouth. Do you understand? He's a person. Now, you can't understand God in terms of as if he were human. He's not a man. He's not human like we are. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is divine, and we can't fully understand that. But we're made in his image after his likeness. We're a reflection of him. We're like them. We're three in one like they are, spirit, soul, and body. So I'm saying all that to say to help you understand that the God we serve is a person and not a set of rules. And you need to seek his face. God says, I want you to talk to me face to face. Don't seek my hand. Don't just seek my blessings. That's like somebody coming in your house. Have you ever had them guests come over your house and they rude? They don't even say hi to the man or the woman of the house. Now, when I was raised, I was raised with some home training. HT, baby, home training, good gravy from the Navy. I was raised with some home training, and when you come in somebody's house, you speak to them. You don't just, just bust up in somebody's house and not say hi to the man or the woman of the house. It, no, it, no. How rude could you be? And then got the nerve to ask for some food or ask to use the bathroom. Can I use the toilet? Where's your bathroom? Do you got something to eat? It would be nice if you said, how you doing, Mrs. Johnson? God bless you. How you doing? Hey, God bless you. If you said, how you doing, Brother Johnson? And this is a lovely home. Praise the Lord. Thank you for inviting me in your home. Would you mind if I use the bathroom? Thank you. Okay? But some people, some people don't have no home training. They come in somebody's house. They don't even speak. Okay? That is the way many of his children treat Father God. That is the way we treat the Lord Jesus Christ. We run up in his house. We say, bless me, bless me, bless me. Give me stuff. Give me a new car. Give me a new house. Give me some money. And you haven't talked to the Lord all week. How do you think that makes God feel? Do you understand how rude that is? How would you feel if somebody busted up in your house with give me, give me, give me, and they haven't even said hello, good morning, how are you? This is what I'm trying to get you to understand, that God is a person, and the reason we have personalities is because we get them from him, because we're made in his image. He's a person, not a set of rules. 
and he told you he's got something for you every day. What did you say, Prophet Taylor? I said, God told you he's got something for you every day. Where does it say that in the Bible? When the disciples asked Jesus how to pray, they said, uh, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus said, pray this way. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed or reverence be to thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And here it is. Give us this day our what? Daily bread. Look at that. Just like you have a meal, some kind of meal every day, obviously, unless you're fasting. But if you're not fasting, you've got some cinnamon raisin toast, you've got some, some fruit loops, you've got some sliced apples, you've got some cinnamon oatmeal, you hit that breakfast, or if you don't eat breakfast, you hit that lunch, get yourself a nice grilled cheese sandwich, a nice cob salad, you know, whatever. We do that every day. Well... Did you know that God wants to speak life into your spirit every day? Did you know that there's a scripture to read every day? Did you know that there's a, a sermon to listen to where you can hear the word of God being preached to you? Praise God for YouTube. Praise God for DVDs. Praise God, praise God for MP3 downloads because we no longer have to physically go, uh, you know, where someone's preaching. We can now have the word, you know, in the privacy and comfort of our own homes. But the Lord has something to say to you every day. That means when you get up in the morning, you have to ask the Lord, what is the word for today? What do you want to say to me today, Lord? If you didn't know that. That's right. And the Holy Ghost will lead you to the scriptures he wants you to read for the day. Uh, Bible app. Amen. We got apps on our Bible. The Lord will lead you to the scripture he wants you to read for the day. He'll lead you to the YouTube video he wants you to watch. Or if there's a Facebook live broadcast or any word that God wants to breathe into your spirit for that day, the Lord will tell you every day, daily bread. That's what I mean by seeking his face. That's a relationship. That's talking to someone every day. That's spending time with someone every day. That's, that's opening up your heart and telling Jesus how you feel, what you're going through. Because Jesus Christ gave us the ability to call Father God Abba, Father. If you don't know what Abba means, Abba means out of the Greek, uh, Daddy. It's a term of endearment. So in other words, what Father God is saying is that I let my son Christ go through all of that so that you could crawl up on my lap and be intimate with me, that you could call me Daddy. Think about that. Think about all of the pain and the struggling that Christ went through on the cross. Remember, he didn't want to do it. He surrendered. He submitted to the will of the Father. Think about how Jesus got arrested and, 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 and beaten and whipped and embarrassed. They arrested the Lord, and then they woke up the next day and beat him some more, and they put Jesus on the cross at 9 o'clock in the morning, and the Lord stayed on the cross till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Did you know that? Why? Why in the world would God, would Father God let the Christ go through all that? I'll tell you why. Because he wants us to crawl up on his lap and call him daddy. In other words, Father is saying, I don't want to just be your creator. I want to be your daddy. You see that? And the only way you can develop that level of intimacy with God is you have to spend time with him every day. You have to talk to him every day. You have to be in his word every day. Let him talk to you through the scriptures and through the prophetic. And then you talk to him through prayer, supplication, and intercession. And y'all have an interchange. Y'all have an exchange. Y'all have a relationship. You see that? So God is saying he wants us to seek his face. But the reason I'm telling you that, and I feel a prophetic word coming. I'm going to release a prophetic word for you in a minute. The reason that's so important in this season that's why I do a weekly live prophetic broadcast so that the word of God, the rhema word, the prophetic word can come to you for that day. Remember, I just quoted, give us this day our daily bread. There's some things you need to know on Sunday. There's some things you need to know today. That's why I'm here, because whatever I say next Sunday is going to be for next Sunday. This is April 15th. There's some things the Lord wants you to know right now. 
And that's why I praise God for those of you that tune in and those of you that watch the broadcast live. I know you can't always watch it live, but I praise God when you do, because there are some things that's going to save your life coming out my mouth right now. There are some things that are going to make your Monday, April 16th, be better than it would have been because you heard the prophetic rhema word of God. That's right. That's why I do a live broadcast. Okay? But where you're going in the days and months to come is going to take precision obedience. You are going to have to know the voice of the Lord. You're going to have to know the word of God. You're going to have to know what is the Holy Ghost and what is not, especially if you do deliverance ministry. Now, I'm going to get back to that because uh, I feel this word pressing in my heart. So I'm going to release this word, then I'll get back to that before we close out. For behold, my people, I say unto you, <clears throat> I want you to hear my voice. I want you to know my voice. I want you to seek my face. I want you to be mighty in my word, mighty using, wielding the word as the sword of the Lord against the devil. For in the days to come, there will be many that fall away. There are already many that have fallen because they do not believe my word. They do not respond to my voice when they hear it. So the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. There will be many in the days to come that are deceived, that fall away, that get seduced out of the path. But I want you to be strong. I want those of you that love me and know me and fear my name to stay strong with me. Stay the course, stay close to me, and I will help you navigate through every trap, every landmine, every lie, every deception, every seduction of the devil. I will help you overcome. I will help you win if you stay close to me and if you stay in obedience. And if you do, I will do you like Joseph. It will look like you've been in a pit. You may have been a prisoner, and I will lift you up to the palace in the sight of all. And people won't even know where you came from. But that will only come for those of you that hear my voice and obey my word in the days and months to come. So put on my whole armor. Prepare yourselves to fight. Prepare yourselves with truth. The truth of my word and the knowledge of my spirit so that you can overcome every roadblock, every deception, every lying spirit that will assail you in the days and months to come, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Wow. I'm going to have to go back and listen to that again. I want to get all that as the Holy Ghost was giving that to me because I want to be sure that I do what the Holy Ghost just said. <clears throat> I want to be sure that I listen to Christ and avoid those traps because I want to receive the full blessing of God. And like I always tell you, I'm doing what I'm preaching. <laughs> I'm practicing what I'm preaching. I'm not telling you to do something that I'm not doing, okay? I'm always doing what I'm saying, okay? So I just want you to know that because I know many times people complain about prophets and church people and they say one thing, they do another. I'm in this with you. I am in this with you. I'm listening to the Lord. I want to hear his voice and all that stuff that the Holy Ghost gives me to release. I want to receive it. I want to walk in it too. Because I don't want to be taken down by the devil. I don't want to be knocked out of the way. I want to stay in the path of blessing. Because the way the kingdom of God works is God does not just give you a blessing. God makes you a blessing. And that's not the same thing. When God gives you the blessing, the way you think about that is put something in my hand. No, 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 no. God makes you a blessing. Your life, your life, your life will be a light to others. Your life will make a difference. Your life, because the Lord didn't say you were going to give a witness. The Lord said you will be a witness. Ye shall be witnesses unto me. See, and the Lord will make your life a blessing. Isn't Abraham's life a blessing? Isn't uh, Apostle Paul, isn't his life a blessing? Don't we still live by his words? What about Moses? Wasn't his life a blessing? Didn't his obedience to God result in life to many? What about King David? 
What about all the music that he wrote? Don't we still read the Psalms today? Don't we still write music based on the Psalms? Uh, my pastor, Apostle Eckhart, loves the Psalms. He preaches on, on the Psalms on a re regular basis. So didn't King David's life bless us? Wasn't he a blessing? Uh, that's what I'm trying to show you. What about Peter and the books that he wrote? What about Apostle John in the Bible? Apostle John in the Bible was the one that laid his head on Jesus' chest. Well, Apostle John in the Bible wrote the Gospel of John. He wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. And he wrote uh, the book of Revelation. Aren't we still living off of his words? Aren't we still living off of, don't we read the Gospel of John? Don't we read 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John? 1st uh, John, the, the great love chapters of the Bible. And the book of Revelation telling us about the end times. And telling us about how the end of the Bible is the beginning of eternity. Okay? The end of the Bible is the beginning of eternity. So we're going off on a new adventure with God once this age is over. Did you know that? Did you know that the Bible does not start where God starts? The Bible basically starts kind of where in the creation week. It's in the beginning God created the heaven and work in the earth. And then it goes into the creation week and then God makes us. And then in the book of Revelation, when the Bible ends, that's the beginning of eternity. John said there's a whole new thing God is going to move us into. Do you see what I mean? Because John's life was a blessing. He didn't just get a blessing. He was a blessing. And we still live off of his words today. Well, God is no respecter of persons. So if you walk with him, if you live for him, if you obey him, he's not just going to give you a blessing. He's going to make you a blessing. You're going to be a witness. You won't just give a witness. You're going to be a witness. Can you see it? So that's why it's so important, so important that we stay on the path of God in the days and months to come and we don't get thrown off by the enemy because the enemy is always trying to pull us away. And so that's why Again, uh, we need to be in the Word of God on a daily basis. We need to be listening to the voice of the Lord on a daily basis. We need to uh, get used to the leading of the Holy Spirit so we know uh, when He's talking to us. And we need to get in obedience to all that so we can stay on the path and navigate through the traps of the devil. All right? So I'm so excited about that. You know, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm so excited about the Word of God. I'm so excited about the Spirit of God. I'm so excited about the days and months to come um, because, as you hear me say all the time, serving God is an opportunity to not waste your life because God don't need you. <laughs> God don't need me. God don't need you. God does not need us. God opens his hand and gives you a chance to not waste your life. The plan he has for you is better than the one you would have lived on your own. And he gives you a chance not to waste your life. That's why when you turn away from his voice, you, you, don't, you have no idea what you're missing out on. See that? Okay. Now, somebody, I believe it was, I believe it was uh, Sister Mary, asked me to pray. So if you've got prayer requests, put them up there now, and I'll pray for that. Amen. Amen. Not harm, but plans for hope in the future. Plans to prosper you. Amen. So if you have a prayer request, put it up there now, and I'll pray for it before we close out. Um, but I just want you to be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged by the prophetic word, and I want you to be strong in the written word. Okay, I'm not seeing anything come up. Okay, well, if we don't have any prayer requests, then I will play, pray a closing prayer. Um, amen. All right, here we go. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you just thanking you for an opportunity, O oh God, not to waste our lives. Thank you for an opportunity to serve you. Thank you for an opportunity to be a part of your kingdom, O oh God, because we know that you don't need us. You are the great and mighty God. You are the Lord of all things. You are the Lord over all creation. You are creator. You are redeemer. You are savior. But thank you that your word says, through Jesus Christ, Father, we can call you daddy. You've called us to seek your face. You've called us to that intimate place where we can crawl up on your lap and, and be intimate with you and, and talk about everything that's in our hearts and minds. 
and you as a loving father to hold us in your bosom and in your lap, O oh God. And we just thank you for such a call to intimacy for the, the great and mighty God, the one that has no peer, the one that, that there is no other God beside you, that you would be so gentle and so kind to give us the invitation to be close to you. So we thank you for it. We want to take advantage of it. We want to learn your voice, oh God. We want to be obedient. We want to learn your word. We want to learn your voice. We want to listen to the Holy Ghost because in the days and months to come, we want to overcome the devil. We don't want to be knocked off. We don't want to leave here early. We don't want to miss our blessing. We don't want to miss our place. So I just thank you, oh God. I just thank you for your prophetic word. I thank you for the precious Holy Ghost. I thank you for Jesus Christ and his shed blood. And I thank you for the love of Christ. I thank you, Jesus, for giving your life. I thank you for making that sacrifice, the, uh, the only shed blood that would be accepted as payment for our sin, Jesus, is your pure blood. So I thank you for the blood of Christ that cleanses us from all sin. And I thank you for the name of Jesus, whereby the demons are subject to us in your name, where we can take authority over anything that's unclean and not like God in your name. That only happens in your name, Jesus, and that's why we bless you. We bless you. We thank you. We can't live without you. We need our daily bread from you, but thank you that you are faithful and you are there every day to feed us as a loving father, as a loving savior, as a good shepherd, as Abba Father, our daddy. So I thank you so much for it, and I'm excited about the future. And I bless all those that have listened to this broadcast, all those that have received your word, O oh God. I, I release in your name, O oh God. As the Spirit of God guides me, I release a new spirit of intimacy with God. We release a new spirit of drawing close to God and seeking his face. We release a new spirit of wanting to be close to him and wanting to know him in a new and intimate way. And we release a new spirit of precision obedience that we might do what the Lord says, when the Lord says it, the way the Lord says it. And I thank you that your word says that your yoke, your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And I thank you that your word says that your commandments are not grievous. So we're not going to be grieved by obeying you. We're going to walk into love and joy, blessing and victory. So we thank you for it, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for it through the precious Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Abba Father, our Daddy, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All right, well, thank you so much. God bless you all. God bless you all. You know, I, I, I'm just so excited, and I count it a privilege to be able to bring uh, the prophetic word to you. So, I'll be here next Sunday, regular time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. But I started also a new teaching night. That is the second Thursday of every month. I come on, uh, now last week I came on at 6, I may change it to 7, 7 or 8. Somebody told me that people want a chance to get home from work or whatever. But I'm going, I'm, I'm working on, the name of that broadcast is No More Genies. I'm working on something called Genie Concept. And that's not something I can do during the prophetic word. Something I have to take some more time to teach. So that first video is up here on my Facebook Live page. So you can check it out on Facebook Live. It's also on Periscope. And I believe I'm going to be moving to releasing that with a podcast. So there's going to be a lot of different ways for you to get the word, all right? So thank you. God bless you. That's it for this week. I'll see you 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time next Sunday on Facebook Live and Periscope. And then join me on the second Thursday of every month in the evening. It's either going to be 6 or 7. I'll let you know for a teaching on how to break through on Genie Concept. Okay? God bless you. Have a good Sunday.